this discrete op-amp adapter from JLM Audio is changing the game. It allows you to take an IC chip, specifically a TA7136, and convert it to a 990 or an API 2520 style op-amp. So what that means is you could take something like the Japanese, take the ICs out and swap them with some of the op-amp kits from Cappy or something like a 990 John Hardy. JLM is based out of Australia. You can get these for about $13 US a piece plus shipping. They also contacted me and asked how I wanted the pins soldered or if I wanted them soldered at all. Uh, it comes with these really nice adapters for the ICs so you can put sockets in so you don't have to solder it every time you take it in and out. This is an OA-10 style op-amp that I got from Cappy in a kit. It fits right into the adapter nice and snug. You just gotta kinda take your time, be gentle with the op-amp. The adapter adds about an additional half inch of space, so just be cautious with how tall your op-amp is. Shouldn't have any issue with the potted op-amps, um, but if it's something you're building, you might wanna you know, kinda judge the height. So let's take a look at the install in the Japanese. First thing we gotta do is take the channel strip out so we can get to the ICs, so we can desolder the old op amps. I noticed this channel had a leaky cap on the back, a little bit of corrosion, which worked out for us as you'll see because we kinda do a recap. Um, in fact, I'm gonna recap the whole board. I'm not officially making it a series, but there's plenty of other videos on this Japanese on my page. We'll start out by using a little bit of acetone to clean that off. Now we can get a good look at our IC chips right there. We got three of them per channel. I'm going to be using a little bit of flux on here combined with some desoldering wick or just solder wick. And removing all the solder before I try to just yank the chip out. A little solder wick goes a long way if you combine it with some flux and some patience. Um, on these older boards, you also want to be careful not to burn the traces or damage them in any sort of way. So just take your time and do a little bit, a few pin, a couple of pins at a time. So here you can see the chip versus the adapter. The pins on the original chip might have been just a hair longer, but it'll end up working out perfect. Not a major difference at all. I'm going to test it by just kind of setting it in the holes now that we've got it desoldered. You can see that it fits in perfect. We'll go ahead and carefully solder that into place. I'm using a fairly light gauge solder for this just because the pins are so close together. It's another one of those things that it doesn't ever hurt to take your time doing. So now you can get a good look at it with two of the adapters in. I've still got to get one more op amp, but there's two of them replaced. I don't know if you can tell, but there's a little bit of a clearance issue with the existing components under there. These three caps on one of them won't let the op amp completely sit, which once again was fine because we're going to do a recap anyway on the board. Um, I'm souping this thing up. I'm going to make it the Neve killer. Be on the lookout for the upcoming videos. So we get our new Wima, Wima, however you call it, uh, caps into place, and then we're going to be good to go. We got plenty of room there for our Neumann style op amp to go into place. I've kind of been thinking about maybe putting one bead of solder on there just to hold it in place, but uh, it works good. If you're interested in this and want to hear some A-B comparisons between the IC chips and the discrete op amps, please let me know. This is Rhett with the Heights Lab. i got a whole lot more content on the way. Please like and subscribe.